Good evening, everyone. This is Mary Sean Patterson Howard, and we are here with you for a live update. Um, this is our midweek update. We do Sundays with Sean on um, Sundays, and on Wednesdays, we're doing our Wednesday wisdom. So I just want to start out tonight by reminding everyone that it's time for you to fill out your census applications. Uh, so you should have received your census forms in the mail sometime between the 12th and the 15th of March. And so please, we need you to fill them out. Uh, millions and millions of dollars are attached to the Mount Vernon census uh, numbers, money for our roads, schools, transportation, health, um, job training, youth and, and senior services, nutrition programs, mental health services, reentry programs. Uh, there is over $800 billion that comes down from the federal government. And we need to make sure that Mount Vernon is te uh, counted. I'm getting ready to say tested. Well, we want to make sure we're tested also. But we want to make sure that Mount Vernon is counted so that we could receive our fair appropriation of funding to provide the services that we need to provide here in Mount Vernon, uh, ensuring that all of our residents benefit. So it just takes a few minutes. It's nine simple questions that you have to complete. So make sure you go to 2020census.gov and you complete the census. For your home now when you complete the application uh, if you have 10 people living in your house then fill out the information for all 10 we want to make sure that everyone is counted you do not have to be a resident um, of, of the country you don't have to be quote unquote legal uh, it doesn't matter what your immigration status is as long as you are living in the United States as long as you are living in the city of Mount Vernon we want to make sure that you are counted in the 2020 census um, so COVID COVID has been the conversation of the past few weeks COVID coronavirus uh, and Mount Vernon um, continues to work with our county officials as well as our, our state officials in ensuring that we're getting information out to the community and that COVID services are available uh, here in the community. So as of today, we are at 89. We have 89 people who have tested positive um, for COVID. We know still that there is a lag in the testing numbers. Uh, and so please, please know that these numbers are going to continue to increase. They're going to continue to increase because we are testing more and more people. Um, we receive a lot of questions and calls about having a testing center here in Mount Vernon. Uh, right now, Mount Vernon, North County of Westchester has any control over that. That is something that is managed by the state of New York. And so we are working with um, some of our elected officials to advocate for a testing site here in Mount Vernon. We are the most densely populated community in the county of Westchester and one of the most densely populated communities in the state. Uh, and so we want to make sure that we have easy access. But until then, and if that doesn't happen, we will continue to provide you with information on where you can be tested. Um, for the Westchester County Department of Health, contact 914-813-5000 and you can ask them questions about testing. Also on our cmvny.com webpage for the City of Mount Vernon, we have an entire COVID portal. If you click on that portal, you can get to any information that you want on COVID, whether it's the City of Mount Vernon, the State of New York, Center for Disease Control. There are so many different resources. Uh, you can get lost in that portal. I promise you there's just so many um, good, good information points there and different links that you can follow to get comprehensive information on COVID. Also, please visit um, Mayor SPH or Mayor Sean Patterson Howard Facebook page, Twitter and Instagram. Also, CMVNY Facebook, Instagram and Twitter as well as the Mount Vernon Office of Emergency Management. Uh, daily, we are putting more information up about services that are available, about food distribution, about testing, um, updated numbers, links that people can use uh, for services here in Mount Vernon as well as in the County of Westchester. So please utilize those. We know that not everyone is on social media. Um, and so if you have people in your family who are older, uh, and they are not on social media, please let them know what's going on. We do not have the capacity to go and knock on everyone's door in Mount Vernon to update them. And so one of the things that I encouraged you to do the other day is to ensure that you are looking at Governor Cuomo's 
updates. He does an update on television every day, like Sunday through Sunday. He does an update at 11. You might even want to tune in at about quarter to 11 sometimes because every once in a while he'll start early. But tune into those um, updates, those daily updates from our governor because he's giving really great information. And based on the information that he shares and the mandates that he gives, these are the same things that we are following and implementing here in Mount Vernon. Um, we don't have the capacity to get an hour's worth of television time. And so we try and give... Uh, updates via our social media pages, but it's the same information again that the governor gives. Here in Mount Vernon, one of the things that we've done, um, you know, we know that the governor has, has requested social distancing. This is the primary prevention tool that we have right now in the city of Mount Vernon. And it's really, really important that we follow social distancing. It's critical that we follow social distancing. Um, and, and social distancing really is about us staying six feet apart from each other, especially when we are in public places. So whether you're shopping, um, whether you're taking a walk, whether you're going outside for some fresh air, staying six feet apart from the closest person to you is very, very important because we know that if people are coughing and have a productive cough, then uh, COVID can be transferred from one person to another. But we believe that six feet is a safe distance and so we really encourage you to use that um the governor has strongly urged that we stay inside and that we not hang out and and just roam about but he has not mandated a lockdown whereas people have to stay inside 24 hours a day and so some of the phone calls that we've continued to get um every day at city hall and at the police department are there are different people who are really concerned that they're seeing kids out and playing basketball, playing football, hanging out, you know, playing in different places. We already closed all of the playgrounds in Mount Vernon uh, because we know that we cannot maintain social distancing when kids are playing on different playground apparatuses, nor can we continuously uh, decontaminate those and, and ensure that uh, corona, coronavirus won't be transmitted and so we've closed down our playgrounds but what the step that we are taking additionally now is because we have not been able to keep people out of the basketball courts um, in Mount Vernon playgrounds as well as the school district owned properties we will be removing as of tonight and tomorrow we will be removing all of the basketball hoops from all of the playgrounds and all of the schoolyards. We spoke with Superintendent Hamilton and we will be taking these actions. Some people may say, well, why are you going that far? Well, because we can't get people to stop playing basketball on city and school owned property. Um, and that is totally against social distancing. We really need people to start taking this whole issue seriously. Um, we are seeing our numbers continue to rise all throughout the state. Westchester had 800 new cases since yesterday to today that were reported to us. We cannot continue to go at this pace. Um, we know that, you know, 15, 12 to 15 percent of people uh, with coronavirus end up being hospitalized. And our community nor our region has the capacity to continue to serve such growing numbers of people. And so the only way that we can really combat this right now is through prevention. And we are asking that everyone does their level best. I mean, we want you to really put in an honest effort to make sure that you are keeping your children inside. Now you can get up and go out with them and go for a walk and enjoy some fresh air, but they should not be playing on playground apparatuses. They should not be playing basketball, not only the children, but adults. One of the other things that we've seen is adults congregating and, and having dice games. And you shooting dice with 20 people, let one of them have coronavirus. The next thing, you know, the rest of you are going to have it because you blowing on the dice and you shooting dice. I mean, look, we're the adults in the community and we need you to act responsibly. We need you to be an example right now to our young people. And so what we've done is we've created a task force here in Mount Vernon, our social distancing task force. And we will be asking our police officers to help people move along. Um, not congregating in crowds of 10, 15, and 20 people as you're standing outside. So we're not going to arrest people, but we are going to start moving people along uh, and making sure that we're practicing social distancing. The other thing that we're doing is uh, we understand that our kids are out of school and it's hard to keep them in the house. 
Uh, we know that they have to do school work during the day, and we know that parents are working home from the day during the day, and and houses are pretty tight, and it's a little frustrating being you know just in the house constantly, um, not being able to go to your favorite restaurants, go to church, go hang out with your friends, and things of that nature. But the only way that we're going to get rid of this pandemic is to practice the social distancing right now. And so we need everyone to really, really work with us. Um, we don't want our police force to become a coronavirus task force. We can't do that. We're not looking to do that. We're just asking people to cooperate with us. Um, another thing that we are gonna be doing is we know that there are several businesses that are still open and we call them essential businesses like pharmacies and, and uh, restaurants providing delivery and takeout. Um, supermarkets, Target, Staples, different retail stores that are considered essential businesses, laundromats are still open. What we are doing with that right now is we put together a team of people who are going into the supermarkets, going into the bodegas, Target, you know, Staples and, and pharmacies and other places like that to ensure that these institutions are implementing social distancing. What would that look like? Well, when you're at the supermarket and you're on the checkout line, you should still be standing six feet away from the person who's in front of or behind you. And some of the different supermarkets have literally marked six feet on the ground so people know where to stand as the next person in line. We wanna encourage all of our supermarkets and our, our food, um, stores to do this same thing. We know it's a little harder in the bodegas, but we need you to really try and do this same practice. The other thing we wanna make sure is that all of these stores are sanitizing. I mean, we know that stores usually clean, but there's a difference between cleaning and mopping and sanitizing your stores. Uh, as people constantly touch surfaces and are touching fruits and vegetables and things of that nature, um, we know this is another way that coronavirus can be transmitted. So we're going to be working very hard with our food establishments to continuously provide them with updated best practices um, so that they can institute social distancing and proper sanitary practices. We want to make sure that not only are our workers in those uh, establishment, establishments stay safe, but the customers that are utilizing those services are safe. This Friday... Um, at Lot 1, which is 5th Avenue and 2nd Street, uh, over across from Grace Baptist Church, we will be doing another food distribution. We will be distributing food between the hours of 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. in Lot 1. Uh, we are going to bag up the groceries this time instead of just having choice because it will allow us to move people through quicker, um, serve more people during that time frame, because our goal is to get the food out to the community. And so on Friday between 5 and 7 p.m., <coughs> excuse me, in Lot 1, we will be distributing. Can you pass me a water? Right behind. Um, we will be distributing food um, to the community. And this is really for Mount Vernon residents. We've had people call from other communities. And right now we're really trying to provide services to our residents. Feeding Westchester is working with communities throughout the county um, to provide food. And so we would really encourage you to contact your city officials to see where they're serving. <coughs> no coronavirus, just talking too much, need some water. Um, and as I said, we uh, continue to advocate with our um, state officials and, and our elected officials like Jamal Bailey and Alessandra Biaggi, Senators Bailey and Biaggi, as well as Assemblyman Pretlow, are working with us on the state level to advocate for a testing site here in Mount Vernon. Um, as you've heard, the county executive as well as the governor talk about, we are preparing for a surge in cases here in Westchester um, and of course here in Mount Vernon. To this end, uh, we have, the governor has ordered all hospitals to increase the capacity. Um, Mount Vernon Hospital has been brought back online. I went on Saturday, I took a tour and they're bringing all of the hospital beds at Mount Vernon Hospital back online as well as they'll be working with the Wartburg to provide additional beds here in the city of Mount Vernon to ensure that we are ready to address the need um, as that need comes. 
mental health uh, and domestic violence has been something that we've seen an increase in because people are staying at home because they don't have their normal social out outlets because you're stuck in the house together and frustrated um, we've seen more anxiety in people we've seen some depression in people uh, and so we will be putting on our website as well as on our social media um, pages just different tips for surviving this time of quarantine um, that we're we're dealing with as a community and how to get through the times of quarantine um, as a community because it's not about a person who's been exposed all of us right now are, are really kind of self quarantining by staying at home and so how do you get through that time Westchester County has uh, opened up a hotline for mental health and domestic violence it's 914 995 one nine zero zero again Westchester County mental health hotline is nine one four nine nine five one nine hundred um, we've heard a lot from our small businesses as we know a lot of our small businesses have been closed because they're not considered essential and of course that is definitely hitting the pockets of everyone we're very sensitive to that issue we understand but right now um, public health is trumping a lot of other things but the County of Westchester, again, has created a hotline to keep small businesses updated as to what they might be able to apply for or also to understand whether or not their businesses are essential or not and answer questions. And their phone number is 914-995-2900. And this is a small business hotline, 914-995-2900. And you would ask for Bridget Gibbons. Um, also, if you need other hotline information, you can just contact 211. 211 is the Westchester County's information line, and they have operators there to assist you. Um, look, all of us as municipalities pay taxes to the County of Westchester, and so we're grateful for them providing services back to our communities on this level. Each of the individual municipalities just does not have the capacity to have a full-time hotline to answer questions around the clock. And so we are really grateful um, to our County Executive George Latimer, our Deputy County Executive Ken Jenkins, um, our County Board of Legislators, and the entire county team for working to ensure that the residents throughout the county are all receiving the same information and have access to that same information since it's difficult for us to ramp up to that level um, within each of the municipalities here in Westchester. Uh, are there any questions so far? Did you see any questions in there? Okay, so we're not getting any questions. Really everyone, please focus on the social distancing. That's important. Continue to focus on other prevention efforts like washing your hands um, with warm, and so warm soapy water for 20 seconds. And when you're not around soap and water, make sure that you're using hand sanitizer. The other thing that we really have to say, again, is this is not vacation time. We are in a quarantine situation. And so while you have the kids at home, um, this is not necessarily the time to have slumber parties and sleepovers and gatherings and things of that nature. Because again, that is not involving social distancing. You want to protect your individual household and you just don't know um, what people might be carrying silently right now. And so we have to be careful about having gatherings of even, even friends and family um, in our houses because that really uh, takes away from the whole social distancing piece. So will tax deadlines be delayed? So the tax deadlines, if you're talking about, if you're talking about state taxes, the payment of state taxes, the governor has not made that decision yet around state taxes. He will get to that. Um, soon continue to look at his updates like I said every day at 11 o'clock when it comes to city taxes the city taxes right now are still being collected here in the city of Mount Vernon um, you can play them online you can mail them in and you can contact the controller's office to ask if there are other ways to pay your taxes um, we are having those conversations right now with all of the municipalities um, there is a potential to extend the tax deadline by 21 days uh, the county uh, the city council is literally meeting right now they're having their regular city council meeting right now but it is closed and we're looking at legislating um, 
what we can do about extending the tax deadlines here in the city of Mount Vernon for homeowners and property owners, business owners here in the city of Mount Vernon. But you can pay your taxes online. Um, you know, many of us are paying our taxes through our escrow accounts with our bank. So those things can still happen. You can do it online, you can mail them in, and then you can also contact the controller's office. For people who are still interested and concerned about star payments and their star tax reductions, please reach out to our uh, assessor's office. Our assessor Vanderpool and her staff are still accessible. While City Hall, the building is closed to the public, every department um, is functioning and operating even if it not full steam. So if you call any of the city offices, your calls will be forwarded to our staff who are working from home. Your emails will be answered by staff who are working. We're just not taking on, you know, in-person applications for marriage licenses and dog licenses and things of that nature. That right now is not happening, but you can call each of those offices uh, and your calls will be returned or they'll be answered live. Your emails will be responded to. So the city of Mount Vernon is still operating and functioning, but in response to the governor's uh, mandate that we reduce non-essential on-site, on-location staff, we have uh, a lot of our staff working from home doing distance employment, telecommuting, just like many of you right now are telecommuting but they are still doing the work so please reach out if you have questions alternate side of the street parking we're still getting questions about that alternate side of the street parking continues um, to be suspended uh, but we do ask and we will be coming back to you in the next few days um, maybe neighborhood by neighborhood to ask if we can find a way even if we're not ticketing people to work with the community because DPW has to come through and clean the streets. If we do not start cleaning the streets, we're going to have another problem and another issue that you're not going to want to deal with. So we're asking the city and the community and our residents that as much as people don't want to get up and move cars, as much as we know it's going to be hard to find parking, we're going to have to find some different way um, to do street cleaning in the next few days because we cannot, you know, depending on how long this goes on, we cannot not we have to clean the streets. So we're going to, you know, if you have good ideas and, and if you have suggestions, please share those with us as well um, because we have to make sure that we clean the streets. I don't think that we have any other questions right now. Um, so I don't have much else to say. But again, remember, social distancing is key. Um, making sure that you're washing your hands is key. Please work with your children to do their homework online. Um, because that's still very important. We continue to talk to the superintendent about online uh, learning happening. If you have some challenges, definitely reach out to the school district. And as we stated before, if there's anyone out there that has spare laptops that you can donate or iPads that you're no longer using, um, we have plenty of students throughout the school district who are in desperate need um, of this so that they complete their online assignments. So they're saying it's crowding in supermarkets. So Danny, are they saying that supermarkets are crowded? They're saying can we limit the amount of people that are allowed in supermarkets at one time? So one of the things that I said earlier in the broadcast, and I was getting ready to go back and repeat some of the things, is that in an effort to uh, address social distancing and assure that our essential businesses are following um, the advice and guidelines around social distancing. We have created a social distancing task force and one of their responsibilities are they are going into the different supermarkets, pharmacies, stores like Target uh, and Staples that are, are still open and providing essential services to ensure that these businesses um, have in place social distancing guidelines whether they're limiting the number of people who they let in the store at one time, whether it's at the checkout counter that they're ensuring that people are six feet in between, have six feet in between them. Um, when they're checking out, we know that Stop and Shop has even put up plexiglass uh, at the checkout counters to kind of um, protect the people, who, the customers, as well as to protect the staff. Um, we will be going and we'll be looking and, and doing spot checks 
Um, if you see that there are constant problems in a place, please reach out to us. You could send an email to what? Communicate, where do you want them to send an email? Um, communications at cmvny.com. You can send an email to communications at cmvny.com just to let us know if there are spaces, you know, that there's a lot of constant congregation going on and, and people coming together, or if there are businesses that are not necessarily um, operating according to social distance guidelines. You could please send us that information and we will follow up. Uh, to ensure that they are doing uh, these things. We want to make sure if you're working in a company or an organization, we've had people reach out to us and say, look, there are people at my job that we know are COVID positive, but my job is not allowing people to stay home and we're concerned about being infected. The first thing I would tell you to do and encourage you to do first and foremost is speak to your employer. If you can't, if you don't believe you can speak to your employer, Again, you can reach out to us at communications at CMVNY and we will follow the facts. Now, this is not retaliatory. This is not, oh, I just want to stay home and be on quarantine for the next two weeks uh, and get paid. And, and I really don't have a case. We will follow up or try to follow up on legitimate issues and things that we cannot handle. We might kick up to the County Department of Health or the State Department of Health for them to follow up, but we want, we ask people to use this resource um, respectfully and not to abuse the resource right now that we're putting out there. Um, and again, our playgrounds that are city owned as well as the playgrounds and basketball courts that are school owned. Um, as of tomorrow, you will see the basketball rims disappearing. And again, this is because you cannot play basketball with social distancing. If you really paid attention, the NBA and college basketball and everything else is canceled. Those seasons are canceled because we already saw some spreads in nature, uh, and, and positive cases happening in the NBA. We don't want our kids or our adults in playgrounds um, being exposed to COVID just because they can't um, give up on basketball for the next few weeks. Uh, I, I also spoke to our superintendent and, you know, Depending on how this goes, hopefully school will be back in session before the end of the year. I know so many parents have questions about their kids' graduations and proms, and those things are important. When kids have gone through school and they've worked hard um, and they've completed their different tasks, they look forward to opportunities to celebrate. <coughs> really for the height of coronavirus in our area. All of us, none of us have experienced this before. So we're all watching and waiting and we're planning and planning is changing day by day. Danny? Um, what about price gouging? <laughs> hmm? Price gouging. If you see price gouging, again, report that to us at communications at CMVNY. Um, we do have our um, Office of Consumer uh, Affairs and Protections going out and investigating reports of price gouging. But when it comes to sanitizers or wipes or things of that nature, um, if the manufacturer or the distributor has increased the price um, that they are charging the stores to have these things in the store, those prices are gonna be passed on to the customer. So I think about 85% of the price gouging reports that we've gotten and investigated so far, we've been able to confirm that those stores have been charged more um, for the product products. And it's really the simple law of um, supply and demand. When there's great demand and minimal supply, even the stores have to pay more to have it and that cost is gonna be passed on um, to you, the consumer. But we are actively investigating any claims of price gouging uh, if you bring it to our attention at City Hall. So everyone, thank you so much. And I want to end as I began, and that is encouraging you to please go um, to 2020census.gov. Make sure that you are completing your census application. The amount of money um, that can be generated by us having a complete count here in Mount Vernon um, is critical. This money will come into Mount Vernon to help us 
repair our roads, make sure we have proper lighting, that we're able to improve our schools, that we're providing health care services, mental health services, job training, youth and senior and family services. These are all critical and essential um, things that come and, and will benefit Mount Vernon um, the higher that we, the higher response rate that we have in people completing the census. We believe that our, our community has been undercounted by over 30%, over 30%. And if we can increase that, and if we can get to 100%, that's almost $83 million that we're looking at being eligible for and being able to go after. So we really, really need everyone um, to do your level best and make every effort to complete out, not make every effort, but to complete your census and make every effort to speak to your neighbors, your friends, your family, your frenemies, and let them know that they need to fill out their census as well. Thank you very much. Um, rem remember to please look at the governor's updates daily at 11 o'clock. They're full of a lot of really, really good information as to how um, we are addressing coronavirus here in the state of New York and what are some of the needs and um, it just keeps you informed. So thank you everyone. Stay at home, stay safe, God bless. Oh, and last thing, uh, if you notice and you look on my Facebook page, you will see that I have a frame that says like, stay home, stay healthy, Mount Vernon. So please um, go to, go when you wanna change your frame, Put in hashtag, what is it? What is the stay hashtag? Home. Hashtag, stay, hashtag home. stay home Mount Vernon. So if you, when you're looking for the frame and you hit hashtag stay home Mount Vernon, it will give you the frame so that you can put it around your profile picture. So Mount Vernon, look, you know, we're a small town, but we can represent. I'm asking and I'm asking everyone to really take that challenge and go and um, hit add frame to your profile picture. And, and look for the frame that says hashtag stay home Mount Vernon. This is just one of the other ways that we're going to remind people and get that information out. A lot of you did it and, and changed your profile pictures or your frames when we were running and doing political campaigns. Now this is a public health and public safety campaign. So change your frame on your Facebook profile to hashtag um, to stay home Mount Vernon. And that's the way you'll find it. Thank you so much. Just in closing, I want to continue to give a shout out to all of our first responders, everyone who is continuing to work, my incredible team here in the city of Mount Vernon, the residents who are really um, practicing social distancing and staying home. Shout out to you, to our health care providers who are, who are out there putting their lives on the line every day. Shout out to you, to, to everyone who's just really coming together to, to work together and address this situation in our community. Community. We really just want to thank you so much. Um, and to our teachers, keep up the good work. We know that you're sitting at those computers every day and you have no idea right now how much you are a lifeline to the young people who are sitting on the other side of the computer, just kind of needing your guidance, needing your support, needing your encouragement, and still needing to make sure that they get their schoolwork done. We don't want our young people to suffer educationally. So thank you so much. And I'm just gonna go back again really quickly. Um, Westchester County has a mental health and domestic violence hotline. The number is 914-995-1900. And also the small business hotline um, for the County of Westchester, if you have questions, is 914-995-2900. And for all things coronavirus here in the city of Mount Vernon, um, visit our social media pages as well as the city's website, www.cmvny.com. And there is a COVID-19 portal that will take you anywhere you need to go to find out what you need about coronavirus. Thank you so much. And for testing, last thing, for testing, you could reach out to the Westchester County Department of Health at 914-813-5000. Take care, Mount Vernon. Have a good night. Be blessed. Love you all.